ولا يحصي نعماءه اللادون ولا يودي حقه المجتهدون الذي لا يدركه بعد الهمم ولا يناله غوص الفطن الذي ليس لصفته حد محدود ولا نعت موجود ولا وقت معدود ولا اجل ممدود فطر الخلائق بقدرته ونشر الرياح برحمته وودد بالصخور ميدان ارضه ثم الصلاه والسلام على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين شفيع المذنبين حبيب الله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد ما صل على محمد وعلى وعلى ال بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين ولعنة الله على اعدائهم اجمعين من يوم عداوتهم الى يوم الدين اما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الحكيم وهو اصدق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولله الاسماء الحسنى فادعوه بها امنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم صلي على محمد وعلى محمد اما بعد السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمه الله وبركاته i begin in the name of allah tbarak wa taala there is no doubt that is due to his kindness and generosity that he provides for us opportunities such as these where we gather in remembrance of him tbarak wa taala next we begin this sermon the way the commander of the faithful ali ibn abi talib alayhi afdalu salatu was salam allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad would begin so many of his sermons by saying usikum wa nafsi bi taqwallahi al azim i advise you and i advise myself to be god conscious god fearing pious human beings we continue with the most beautiful names of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the name that we have reached to today is alwasi' 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 means the one who is boundless the one who has no limits and the one who is all bounteous the all giving is also part of this name when we look at our physical creation the creation the physical creation of human beings we find that we are created with bounds and limits Yeah there is only so much a human being can go without sleep for example there is only so much a human being can go without food or water and on the other hand there is only so much a human being can eat and there is only so much a human being can drink and we can carry that on with our senses as well there is only so much that a human being can see there is only so much that a human being can hear for example if there are five conversations happening at the same time it's nearly impossible to hear all five conversations simultaneously all of these proves the fact that we are limited we are limited in our creation and if we understand the fact that we are limited in our creation what's beautiful about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he only tests human beings with what they can handle yeah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran la yukallifu allah nafsan illa wusaha yeah he says allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not task a soul beyond its capacity right therefore he knows best what's our capacity this is a phenomenal verse because often times when we look at our lives we feel sorry for ourselves we say oh wow oh me oh me this is happening to me and that is happening to me but realize the fact that this is being tested to us because god knows we can handle it yeah if it was too much for us to handle god would not test us with it this is a promise of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so whenever our lives are filled with tests whenever our lives are filled with obstacles that is an honor given to us by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it shows us the the limit of our expanse yeah of how much we can handle now on the flip side When it comes to our creator there is absolutely no limit to what our creator can do and the expanse that he has as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wasi'a kursiyuhu samawati wal ard ya wa la ya'uduhu 
Hifzuhuma. This is a very beautiful second part, right? God says that His seat, His kursi, this is, means His authority, His expanse, knows no limits. It stretches through the heavens and the earth and the beautiful aspect of that. And He is not wearied by its preservation. He does not become tired with preserving it. Yeah? You give a human being authority over a mosque, for example, and the community is 200 people big, his hair will turn white trying to take care of everybody. Yeah? You give somebody a business that is bigger than they can handle, they will lose their minds when it comes to that. God says, my authority spreads the heavens and the earth, and I don't tire in looking after it. It is not too much for me to look after. This is the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we look for specific examples of God's boundlessness, we find very beautiful examples mentioned in the Holy Quran. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is boundless in His knowledge. Yeah? There is no limit to the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. God says, وَسِعَ رَبِّي كُلَّ شَيْءٍ he says, my Lord embraces all things in His knowledge. Will you then not take admonition? Meaning that there is not an event that has ever happened, nor an event that is happening now, nor an event that will happen in the future that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not know about. Yeah? And for believers, as we have always said, this brings a sense of comfort in our lives. Yeah? We see the masaib, the musibah that is happening throughout the world. We see the difficulties that are happening to our brothers and sisters everywhere. We can rest assured in knowing that God is aware of it. Yeah? And everything will be taken account by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is no limit to the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, there is no limit or God's mercy is boundless. Yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءَ أَحْسَنْتُمْ yeah. He says, but my mercy embraces all things. Yeah. My mercy embraces all things. You know, a man comes up to our fourth Imam, Imam al-Sajjad alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala. He says, Ya ibn Rasulullah, with the laws that God has and the admonitions that God has, I'm surprised how a man can ever make it into Jannah. Yeah? The Imam looks at him and says, wait, wait, stop there. He says, with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm surprised how a man will make it to Jahannam. Yeah? The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses everything, my brothers and sisters. We are surviving because of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will enter Jannah only because of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will not be anything that I do in my life that will allow me to enter Jannah. Because we as human beings, what do we do? As soon as we do one good thing, we counter that with something evil right away. As yeah. soon as we do something positive, we will make a mistake in the negative column. But it is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which will grant us salvation. And likewise, if God's mercy is boundless, so is the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna rabbaka wasi'ul maghfira ahsantum. Yeah. This verse is amazing. Yeah. He says, indeed your Lord is expansive in his forgiveness. My brothers and sisters, there is not a sin in this world that we can do. Yeah? That if we repent sincerely, it will not be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is not a sin. Yeah? Even shirk. You know, God says, I don't forgive shirk. Yeah? When you look at the tafsir of that verse, he says, well, this is talking about istighfar. But if one after shirk does tawbah and comes back to God, how can God not forgive him for that? Yeah? In the end, there is not a sin that if we repent for sincerely, it will not be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why one of the worst sins, Ghunay Kabira, that we can do is to lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya'asu Billah. Yeah? When I feel that my sins will not be forgiven by God, this God finds so insulting. Yeah? That He begins to close the doors of mercy from that human being. Therefore, we should have that hope. Yeah? That we can always come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is never too late to turn back to Him. Here we are numerous examples in the Holy Quran about His provisions, about His um, 
uh, creation, all of these get into this definition of him being wasi'ah, him being limitless and completely bounteous. What we find very beautiful about our Creator is that He has given and shared His limitlessness with human beings as well. You see, we in our physical creation are limited. We described this earlier. But when it comes to our immaterial creation, yeah, we are limitless. Yeah? When it comes to the amount of knowledge we can have, we are limitless. It comes to the amount of spirituality we can gain, we are limitless. When it comes to the amount of positive akhlaqi characteristics that I can have, we are limitless. Therefore our responsibility then yeah, is to seek these limitlessness characteristics from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam says, he says, Kullu wi a'in yadiku bima ju'ila fihi. He says, Every container will get, will shrink in size by what you add inside of it. Yeah? It's true, isn't it? You take any container, you begin filling it, doesn't it get smaller in size of what you can add? Illa wi al ilm fa innahu yattasi'u bihi. Yeah? Except for the container of knowledge. The more you add, the bigger it gets. Yeah? These are the examples that we have. When it comes to that which is immaterial, we are limitless. This is a gift given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what becomes our role then? Yeah? What do we have to do in our lives? The first thing is, we need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything and put our complete trust in Him. This is part of every name that we go through. We realize that God has everything at His disposal. There is nothing that is with God um, that I have that God does not have which I need. Therefore, I turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything and put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything. It sounds much easier to say than it actually is, to be quite honest. Yeah? This is why tawakkul is one of the highest characteristics a believer can have, where they can put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have a job interview, you put your trust in God, you try your best. Yeah? You have any condition that you're going through, you put your trust in God, and then we try our best. Everything needs to be turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to be successful. Secondly, we must seek from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the capacity to increase our knowledge and other immaterial characteristics. Yeah? There are so many characteristics like hilm, like compassion, um, like forgiveness, that we have the capacity of increasing within our chests. We need to seek that from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing comes without seeking, nothing comes without striving. If we want the positive characteristics, we have to go after them. And the source of them is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore I need to turn to Him. The third thing then, is that after I have been given expanse, or that which I have been given expanse in, I must benefit others with that. Yeah? This is a major responsibility. You can even say a wajib responsibility. Yeah? When we look at our lives, each one of us have been created uniquely. We each have been given special gifts by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That which is my gift, that which is my expanse, I must share it with others. So for example, if I am wealthy, I must share my wealth with those who are less wealthy. If I have time at my disposal to help others, I must share that with other people. If I, for example, have knowledge, I must share that with those who do not have the knowledge. If I have the qualities of patience and forbearance, I must share those qualities with others so that they can benefit from them. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam Muhammad He says in a very beautiful tradition Innakum lan tas'u nas bi amwalikum fasa'uhum bi akhlaqikum He says you will never be able to fill or make expanse to people with your wealth. Rather, the only way they will be complete is through your akhlaq. Yeah? And this is very true, isn't it? Even when you give somebody money, but if you give it with bad akhlaq, that money leaves a sour taste in one's mouth. Yeah? But if you don't have any money, yet you give them good akhlaq, that will be enough to at least make them happy. 
Yeah? This is our responsibility. This is what we have to do. And the more we begin to do this, we find that God will share His expanse with us. وَآخِرُ الدَّعْوَانَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ لِلَّعِينَ الرَّجِيمِ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد محمد اللهم سيدنا محمد محمد اللهم أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والحمد لله قاسم الجبارين مبير الظالمين مدرك الهاربين نكال الظالمين صريخ المستصرخين موضع حاجات الطالبين معتمد المؤمنين اللهم صل على خاتم النبيين وسيد المرسلين محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وصل على سيد الوصيين أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب صل على محمد وآل محمد نصل على الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين على محمد وآل محمد وصل على سبت الرحمة وإمام الهدى الحسن والحسين سيد شباب أهل الجنة على محمد وآل محمد وصل على علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والحجة القائم المهدي ما صل على محمد وآل محمد صلاة لا غاية لعددها ولا نهاية لمددها ولا نفاد لأمدها اللهم اغفر المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد. When we talk about the expanse of God, which we just did in the first sermon, the most important thing for us to remember from that sermon, um, the whole thing is the most important thing, yeah. Uh, but the part that I want to focus on with the second sermon is that the more we give to others that which we have been blessed with the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases our expanse, our limitlessness, right? And if we want to look for examples of that, uh, we are fortunate enough today to be gathered on the day of the birth anniversary of the Lady of Light, say the Fatima the Zahra alayha abdala salat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. And what, and the, she is one of the perfect examples, yeah? of one who gave so much to others based on what she had been given that in turn Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her unlimited expense. Yeah? He, gave her un he gave her limitlessness. Right? To that extent where it is said in a very beautiful tradition by her father, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَيَغْذَبُوا لِغَذَبِي فَاطِمَا وَيَرْضَى لِرِضَاهَا This is the end goal. Yeah? This is the end goal when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins to share His characteristics with us. Right? The names that we remember are for what? They're not so that it's only reserved for God. He wants to share these names and these characteristics with us. She reached such a status that it is said by the Prophet in all books, yeah, in the books of Sunnah and the books of Shia, that Allah indeed gets angry when Fatima is angry. 
and he is pleased when Fatima is pleased. Allahu Akbar. Yeah? Allahu Akbar. See, right now, what's our goal? Our goal is to be angry when God is angry. Yeah? Our goal is to be pleased when God is pleased. When one begins to get to that level, we get to the level of Fatima, where God is angered by what she is angered. Yeah? And God is pleased by what she is pleased. This is the status of Fatima alayhi salam and we are honored to be gathered in celebration of her in this day. One of the many gifts that we have received from this pious lady, um, one of them is the tasbih of Fatima alayhi salam. Yeah? This tasbih that we recite um, of 33, 34, Allahu Akbar, 33, Alhamdulillah, and 33, Subhanallah. This is one of the greatest gifts that we've been given and it comes from the progeny, or comes from the line of Fatima alayhi salam and it is something that we cannot take lightly. We get, you know, a tradition from our sixth Imam, Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salam. He says, if there was a dhikr, if there was a remembrance greater than the remembrance or the dhikr of the tasbih of Fatima, the Prophet would have given that to her as a gift. Yeah? I and mean, there is no gift, there is no dhikr one can recite. There is no remembrance one can do of God better than this tasbih that we do at the end of our salah. We've narrated this story before, but it's worth narrating again. You know, it said that once um, Imam Ali alayhi salam came home to find Fatima, Allah, Muhammad. And he came home to find Fatima alayhi salam in great difficulty. She was looking after the community affairs, she was looking after the affairs of the house. And he says, you know, you're the daughter of the Prophet. Go and ask him to provide you a help in the house so that you don't have to work so hard. It is said Fatima alayhi salam was embarrassed at this to go and ask for her Prophet. She walked into the Prophet and the Prophet was around or surrounded by some of his companions. So she left because she didn't want to ask him. It said the Prophet recognized this. He came to the house of Fatima and he says, Ya Fatima, I know you came to me for something. Yeah? Can you tell me what it is that you need? So Fatima was embarrassed. So in some traditions it says Imam Ali told him. He says, Ya Rasulullah, I find your daughter in this condition and I asked her to go to you for assistance. So the Prophet says, can I give you something which is better than any servant that you can ask for and it will help you in this life and the next. She says, of course, Ya Rasulullah. So she says, he, the Prophet says, before you go to bed, Recite 34 times Allahu Akbar, recite 33 times Alhamdulillah, recite 33 times Subhanallah and end that with Allah ilaha illallah and you will notice all your problems will go away. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Yeah? My brothers and sisters, it is said Fatima took to um, this tasbih so much that she made beads out of it yeah? or she took a string and she tied knots and she would recite this after every salah and the imams say that this became part of our lineage. There's a very lovely tradition regarding this. One tradition says by our sixth Imam alayhi salam, Ya Harun, Ya Aba Harun. He says to a person by the name of Abu Harun, Abu Harun Inna na'amuru sibyanana bi tasbihi Fatima alayhi salam kama na'amuruhum bi salah fa'alzimhu fa'innahu lam yulzimhu abdun fashaqi. He says that we order our children, we command our children to recite the tasbih of Fatima the way we command them to recite Salah. Allahu Akbar. Yeah? And we tell them that it is part of Salah. We order them to recite it because one who includes this as part of his Salah will never become misfortunate will never become misfortunate. Yeah? In another tradition, this is something inshallah we can take home to us. He says, Man sabbaha bi tasbih Fatima alayha salam fi duburil maktuba min qabli an, yas, an yabsuta rijlay aw jaballahu lahul jannah. Yeah? He says one who recites the tasbih of Fatima alayha salam after his wajib salah, before he even moves his legs, God will guarantee him Jannah. Yeah? 
from a tasbih of Fatima. My brothers and sisters, um, let us honor this lady of light. Let us honor this pious lady by following in her footsteps and taking to heart these traditions so that we can teach it to our future generations so that the name of Fatima will be right after the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Isn't that amazing? Yeah? Five times a day when we say Allahu Akbar, at the end of it we say the tasbih of Fatima. Yeah? That means she is connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is our job to make sure she remains connected for the rest of eternity, inshaAllah. Wa akhiru da'wan and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Wa al-asri inna al-insana lafi khusr illa al-lazina amanu wa amilu al-salihati wa tawasaw bil-haq wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Sadaqallahu al-aliyu al-azim.